explosions, the seven-hour standoff, a woman setting off her suicide vest, and the mystery tonight about a second person who was killed. Was it the mastermind? Also developing tonight, ISIS now claiming it was their bomb in a simple soda can that brought down that Russian passenger plane, the jet breaking apart in midair. Brian Ross is standing by tonight. The concern back home in America, two flights over the U.S. making emergency landings. Tonight, we've learned why they acted so quickly. And after praising the attacks here in Paris, ISIS saying an American city is next. So this evening, how difficult is it to track ISIS sympathizers at home? The 900 terror investigations in all 50 states. From ABC News, this is a special edition of World News Tonight with David Muir. Reporting tonight from Paris. And good evening from Paris. And we begin tonight with that daring and deadly raid that lasted seven hours here in Paris. We were there in the early morning hours today. SWAT teams showed up in the dark. A massive operation. And tonight, a French prosecutor saying they likely stopped another terror plot. New images tonight of the moment those teams moved in, deafening gunfire. Thousands of rounds fired. And the target the whole time the man who authorities call the mastermind of the Paris attacks. Tonight, did they get him? Also, video from the Daily Mail, French SWAT teams crouching behind shields. Authorities say they got there before this cell could cause new harm. And this image, just one of the suspects taken into custody. Tonight, the numbers, at least two dead, including a woman who blew herself up, setting off her suicide belt. Eight arrests, five officers injured. Tonight, we take you right to that building. While back at home in the U.S., the New York City Police Department now responding to an ISIS message with an image of Times Square behind it. But we begin with the new images here in Paris of that takedown in this city. They came in swiftly under cover of darkness. 4.20 this morning, French SWAT teams heavily armed to neutralize suspected terrorists that they feared were planning to launch new attacks. Police firing 5,000 rounds. Terrified families shocked awake by gunshots, the explosions. Many of them capturing the images just outside their windows. One video just emerging tonight showing what appeared to be the first French SWAT team arriving and entering the building. A French prosecutor tonight revealing the SWAT teams were met with reinforced doors to the apartment they were trying to storm here in the Saint-Denis neighborhood. The prosecutor saying they were met with a barrage of firepower, gunshots as they tried to get into the apartment. The rapid, heavy gunfire could be heard through the streets. Witnesses seeing police and terror suspects through their windows, the terrified residents watching it all unfold. On your knees, show me your back. On your knees, show me your back. You can hear the police yelling. On the perimeter, officers tense, guns raised, stopping civilians, their hands raised as they slowly approach police getting patted down. This man woke up to what he called a deafening blast. I jumped out of bed, he says, opened the window and put my head outside. The police said no, shut the window, close it, close it. When it was over, eight arrested, at least two people dead. A woman who detonated her suicide belt and another person killed by a grenade explosives who has not been identified by French authorities tonight. Tonight, it's believed investigators are trying to determine whether it might be the mastermind, 27-year-old Abdel Hamid Aboud, behind the coordinated attacks in Paris. The identities of the dead are still being investigated, DNA testing on the bodies from the scene. But tonight, the fate of that so-called mastermind remains unclear. There is cell phone video showing suspects being led away by the SWAT teams, some stripped of those clothes pulled from the building. We now know the SWAT teams converged on this neighborhood north of Paris, not far from the soccer stadium, with help from cell phone conversations and surveillance since Friday's attacks. Witnesses who said they had seen a boot here in France. The prosecutor also saying we have reason to believe with their weaponry and structured organization that this cell could have tried to carry out another plot. This morning when the sun came up, the explosions could still be heard and the ambulances were lined up prepared for anything. As you can see, along with the heavy uh, police presence, there's also a number of ambulances here at the scene as investigators go through that building. Great. And we went to meet some of the stunned neighbors ourselves. They witnessed it all. 
Through the door up the stairs, we meet Diana DeCour, who told me she was jolted from bed by the explosions. Did they tell you to close the windows? Yes, to close the windows and to stay at home. We also went to get a look at the building, climbing onto a roof across the way. A French prosecutor revealing they thought the so-called mastermind was believed to be in a safe house on the third floor. Smoke could be seen pouring out of the window. Just looking at the building, you can see the sheer force of the firepower in the early morning hours here uh, in Paris. Not only is every window blown out, but you can see the, the signs of impact against the cement wall there behind us. The man who allowed them to stay in that apartment detained during the raid and questioned by investigators, saying, someone asked me to put people up for three days and I did them a favor. I don't know where they came from. I don't know anything. If I'd known, do you think I would have done it? And tonight, the French prosecutor also revealing more about the cell phones the attackers are believed to have used the night of the attacks. One found in the trash outside the Bataclan Theater. On it, a text to a member of the terror cell at 10.30 p.m. saying, quote, we're ready, let's go. And also at this hour, we are getting stunning new images from the Daily Mail tonight. Surveillance footage of the attack on a cafe in Paris, the moment an attacker appears opening fire. When the coast is clear, this woman sprinting inside, taking cover. Then the gunman reappearing, taking aim again, his weapon jamming, the gunman moves on. Seconds later, one woman, her life spared when that weapon jammed, popping up. She survived. Just incredible images tonight. In the meantime, we turn now to the other developing headline this evening. ISIS releasing this image in the pages of a propaganda magazine, a soda can and wires, what they call an IED, an improvised explosive device. ISIS claims smuggled onto that Russian passenger jet, the plane breaking up in air, killing all 224 on board. ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, on whether a bomb in a soda can is plausible and their new claim. The components are simple costing no more than $50, a soda can packed with explosives and a few wires. But bomb experts say it could produce a blast much more powerful than the one in this government test. ISIS today proudly displayed what it says is the bomb that brought down the Russian jet. A Schweppes Gold pineapple drink can stuffed with explosives would be ignited by this small detonator with a blasting cap stuck into the can, wired to this, the switch, with a timer likely hidden behind the black tape. Close the switch and arm the timer to start the, its countdown. And boom. The plane blew up 22 minutes after takeoff. Based on the location of the wreckage, U.S. authorities believe the bomb was likely placed in our rear luggage hold of the plane by an ISIS infiltrator. In its online post today, ISIS boasted it smuggled the bomb onto the Russian jet after it discovered a way to compromise the security at the Sharm el-Sheikh airport. And in a grisly footnote, ISIS even produced passports of some of the Russian victims, somehow retrieved by the terror group at the scene of the crash. Tonight, U.S. aviation security officials say screening machines should spot a soda can bomb. But there is concern that no security system is foolproof. Even with the best of security screening machines, if you have an insider who's willing to place an explosive on a plane, uh, you have a real problem. ISIS says it had originally targeted a passenger jet from a country that's part of the U.S. coalition targeting ISIS, but decided instead to hit a Russian plane after Russia, David, began to, Syri to bomb Syria as well. David. Brian Ross at our New York studio again tonight. Brian, thank you. And ISIS, of course, praising the attacks here in Paris and vowing to strike Washington, D.C. Tonight, the new threat, ISIS releasing these new images, what appears to be an ISIS fighter with images of New York City, Times Square behind him. This comes just as millions of Americans are preparing to travel for the holidays. And ABC senior justice correspondent Pierre Thomas with new reaction this evening from the NYPD. In a newly released propaganda video from ISIS, you can see a man preparing for a suicide attack. Then footage of New York City iconic landmarks. It comes only days after another video threatened a strike against Washington, D.C., putting U.S. law enforcement under tremendous pressure to keep everyone safe. We have more police in the District of Columbia than any city in the United States. They were already at a very high level, and they have assured me that they're at a, an even higher level. There are more than 900 terror investigations in all 50 states, many involving ISIS. The investigations range from those in the early stages to some in the final days, when dozens of agents and analysts may be required for surveillance and undercover work 
for a single individual. While no specific plot targeting the homeland has been identified, authorities are taking no chances. We are out there uh, both overtly and covertly and, and, and remain and stay at a high level. As for that ISIS propaganda video depicting New York, the NYPD says it's aware, but still there's no specific threat and they will remain at heightened alert. David? Pierre Thomas with us tonight. Pierre, thank you. An intense 24 hours for passengers flying over the U.S. A bomb threat called in two Air France passenger jets making emergency landings, one in Salt Lake City, the other forced to land in Halifax. Passengers describing the fear, flight crews in tears. As tonight, airports from coast to coast scramble to stay one step ahead of any new threat. ABC's David Curley covers aviation. An emergency landing and evacuation of Air France passengers in two separate cities. Anonymous bomb threats shortly after takeoff for Paris. Air France 065, and are you still dumping fuel? Yes, sir. The phoned in threat said a bomb would go off in 90 minutes. Air France 65, Salt Lake Tower, you're in Turtle Land. That flight, landing in Salt Lake City, had left Los Angeles. The other took off about the same time from Washington, landing in Nova Scotia, where passengers were taken off so authorities and canines could screen the jetliner. I would rather come to Halifax for the night than um, risk my plane exploding over the, the Atlantic. Both jets and 600 passengers cleared. It was a hoax. And with the busy Thanksgiving travel week ahead, the Secretary of Homeland Security is trying to allay any fears. We continue to encourage the public to travel, attend public events, but remain vigilant and aware. Airlines are estimating that more than 25 million Americans will fly this Thanksgiving holiday season. The Homeland Secretary said today that additional security measures have already been put in place. David? David, thank you. More tough talk tonight from French President Hollande here saying France is at war with terrorism vowing to defeat ISIS. Backing up those words with swift action launching new airstrikes on ISIS targets in Syria, hitting training camps, ISIS headquarters, and deploying that French aircraft carrier 24 hours ahead of schedule to the coast of Syria to join the fight. ABC's chief global affairs correspondent Martha Raddatz with the new images, the dramatic show of force as she reports in from the region tonight. Day four of withering airstrikes on ISIS targets in Syria. Russian aircraft flying 65 missions, claiming to have destroyed numerous ISIS oil depots and command centers as the French aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle moves closer to the Syrian coast, packed with firepower. In the last 48 hours, destroying six major targets. But here in Iraq and in Syria, where the U.S. has been conducting thousands of airstrikes, the U.S. military expressing concern today over Russia's tactics. A military spokesman calling those large-scale bombing runs with so-called dumb bombs antiquated, suggesting the Russians have little regard for civilians below. And David, here in Iraq, ISIS still controls large swaths of territory, including the second largest city here, Mosul. Those airstrikes have done little to dislodge the terrorists there, David. Martha Raddatz reporting in tonight. Martha, thank you. Now to the debate back at home over whether to welcome refugees to the U.S. At least 31 governors saying refugees are not welcome in their states, more than half the country now. And this evening, House Speaker Paul Ryan calling for a security test instead of a religious test, doubling down on the need to pause the president's plan to admit 10,000 refugees in the U.S., saying America can be compassionate, but we should also be safe. ABC's chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. In a bid to strike middle ground on an explosive issue, Speaker of the House Paul Ryan said today he doesn't want to end the Syrian refugee program, but only pause it long enough to ensure no terrorists use it to enter the United States. People understand the plight of those fleeing the Middle East, but they also want basic assurances for the safety of this country. But Ryan is outright rejecting calls by some Republicans to only let in Christian refugees. We will not have a religious test, only a security test. The White House said tonight the president would veto Ryan's bill. Traveling in Asia, Obama vowed to move ahead with his plan to bring in 10,000 Syrian refugees over the coming year accusing Republican opponents of fear-mongering. They've been playing on fear in order to try to score political points or to advance uh, their campaigns. Uh, and it's irresponsible, and it's contrary to who we are. And it needs to stop because the world is watching. Earlier, the president had called Senator Ted Cruz's proposal to ban Muslim refugees un-American, 
Today, Cruz fired back. But I would encourage you, Mr. President, come back and...